The most important thing in order for you to be actually good with money is for you to continually learn about how to be good with money. So congratulations on taking the first steps on being good with money. Now, let's talk about some practical steps, all right? Whoosh. What's going on, people? It's your boy, Kalechi, back with another video of the first one of 2022. I hope y'all are having a wonderful and a great new year. Wishing y'all all the best in 2020. Two, I hope this year is much better than 2021 was for everybody. But anyway, today, like I said, we're talking about how to get good with money. And we're going to start with number one, which is have goals. One of the reasons, if not the biggest reason why we suck with money so much is because we don't have a goal for our money. We don't have something that can become our North Star for our dollars. We just kind of lollygag and allow our money to do whatever it wants to do. We don't have something that we're chasing after. We don't have a reason why we want to save money or pay off debt. We don't have any of those things. We just say, well, you know, they say it's a good idea for us to save some money. So we need to save some money. And so every time something else comes along the way, it's like, oh, you know what? A new phone would be nice right now. There's no reason for you to sacrifice. There's no reason for you to wait. And that's the main thing of having goals. It gives you a North Star to pursue. It gives you something to take step by step towards. It gives you something to look forward to, which is so important when it comes to our money. In other for you to be better with money, you have to have goals. But that's the thing. A goal is nice, but you need to have plans in place to accomplish those goals. And that leads us to number two. There are two sayings. One is, a goal without a plan is just a wish. And the second one is, he who does not plan, plans to fail. And so the thing is, when it comes to accomplishing those goals that you sit down and you write down and say, you know what? I want to save money because I want to buy a new car. I want to save money because I need to make a down payment. I want to save money for retirement. I want to save money for X, Y, and Z. Or I want to pay off debt so that I can. When you have those written down, those are cool, but now you got to put a plan in order. And in order to make a plan to reach your goal, you got to do two things. Track your expenses and make a budget. And I know most of y'all are going to be like, yo, I've tried, man. I've done this in the past. It ain't worked. But the question I have for you is, did you actually do it? Because there's a difference between like doing it and actually being it. There's a huge discrepancy there. When I first did tracking my expenses, making a budget, downloading the Mint app, putting it on my phone, saying like, you know what, I'm doing all this stuff. I wasn't actually doing it though. That's the thing. I was just kind of going through the motions. I wasn't paying attention to where my money was being spent. I wasn't paying attention to what was coming in and out of my account. I wasn't living according to the budget that I had set for myself. I was still just spending money any which way. And for a lot of us who are trying to be better with money, who are trying to get to the place where we no longer need a budget, because I can promise you this, if you handle the things that you need to handle right now, you ain't got to use a budget forever. It's just to put those training wheels on. It's just to put the train on the track so that it starts heading in the right direction. It's kind of like driving around a new city. When you first move to a new city, you have to use Google all the time to know where you're going. But eventually, you get used to where you are. And guess what you don't have to do all the time unless you live in Atlanta and you know how these streets are in Atlanta. You better be using that Google Maps or else you're going to be sitting in traffic all day. Man, this city just sucks. But anyway, point is, if you live in a normal city, that doesn't have traffic like Atlanta does, you get to know where you are and you can actually drive around without always having to think about, yo, let me put on this GPS so I know where I'm going. And that leads us to number three, track your net worth. For those who may not know, a net worth is just simply your assets minus your liability. Your assets are things that are putting money in your pocket and your liabilities are those things that are costing you money. So for example, your student loans is gonna be liabilities because it's taking money out of your pocket. The, the loan that you have, on your car is a liability. It's taking money out of your pocket. Your credit card debt, that's a liability. It's taking money out of your pocket. On the other hand, assets will be cash that you have from a job that sits in a bank account, savings accounts, investment accounts. Those kind of things are assets. Those are things that are actually putting money in your pocket. The reason why we do a net worth statement or the reason why we track our net worth is because sometimes the first time you see your net worth, it gives you a different perspective. It gets you to start thinking about things just a little bit differently. When I first saw my net worth, when I saw that I was worth negative 20 something thousand dollars, 
all of a sudden, my mindset switched. I all of a sudden realized that, you know what? Maybe I'm not rich just because I have a job that's paying me every two weeks. That does not make me feel like I got money. This is telling me otherwise because this is the thing that determines if I'm rich or not. A lot of people just look at salary payments and all of this stuff. That's not what determines your wealth. Your wealth is determined by your net worth. And when you actually see your net worth, it can, it just instinctively unlocks something in your mind to be like, yo, we need to handle some business. Like we can't be playing these games that we've been playing and tracking it and keeping in touch with it and understanding where you are right now will help you actually push forward. And then now we have the last two of how you can get better with money. Number four is something that I like to consider to be the foundation of your entire financial life. If you get number four right, so many other things will fall in place. And that is to have an emergency fund and to stay out of high interest debt, to get and stay out of high interest debt. Start off with having at least $1,000 to $3,000 and then after that, have at least three to six months of your expenses just sitting in an account that you do not touch. It's like building a house. If the foundation of that house is solid, no matter what rocks it, no matter what happens up top, guess what? You can always rebuild up. You can always start over. You can always handle what needs to be handled. But if the foundation is always shaky, everything else that's built on top of it, it doesn't matter. It will fall apart because the foundation is not strong enough. And this is why I talk about having an emergency fund and also paying off high interest debt. Because the problem is with high interest debt is it continues to bite at you. It doesn't allow you to make progress. Every time you feel like I can have a solid foundation, all of a sudden you discover, oh, look at that. Another sinkhole just appeared in the middle of my kitchen. What am I supposed to do with that? This is why it's so important that we get out of high interest debt. I'm looking at you credit cards and I'm looking at you auto loans. Get out of those things as quickly as possible. And then on the other hand, get an emergency fund. Get an emergency fund. Something that if certain situations come up, you can at least deal with them immediately. And you don't have to stress so much about all the little things in life. And number five, the one that I love to talk about the most, and most people love to talk about, which is investing. But I'm not just talking about any kind of investing. I'm not talking about investing in your Robinhood account or M1 Finance account. I'm talking specifically about investing in retirement accounts. Accounts like your 401k at work that might give you a 100% match up to a certain amount. Accounts like your IRA, individual retirement account. Accounts like a HSA, which I have a video on all of these accounts up here. The reasons why I talk about investing in these accounts is because of two reasons. Reason number one, it forces you to have a long-term view when it comes to investing. Because for most of us, actually all of us, we won't have access to the money in this account until we are 59 and a half years old. Which, if you're as young as me, you know, I'm looking good, I'm looking young, I'm looking fly, it's still like 30 plus years down the road. And then the second reason why I talk about these accounts is because they have tax advantages, which is the government is incentivizing you to actually use this account for your retirement, for growing money. The reason why I talk about this so much is because if you start today, the earlier you start to invest, the less you have to invest in the future. If you get time to compound on your side, to get on your side, where over time money is just growing in the background, you don't have to really do anything if you just invest in passive index funds, passive total market index funds, that money will grow on your behalf and you won't have to do much of anything, which is why I talk about getting started investing as soon as you can possibly get started investing. Even if it's little amounts that you can put towards it, you should definitely be doing that. And then I got a little bit of a bonus one for y'all to finish this thing out. I have a saying here on the channel, which is generosity is always greater than greed. And the reason for that is in my life, I've seen that giving and being generous has just made things work a little bit better for me and has made life a little bit sweeter for me. And so I just wanted to share that with everyone that another way that you can get much better with money is by learning not to hold onto it so tight, is by learning to share, 
is by learning to, learning to give of yourself. Is by learning to see money not as the be all end all, but as a means to an end. But anyway, that's all I got for y'all. I hope y'all learned one, maybe two things out of this entire thing. Let's do a quick re back recap of all the five ways that you can learn to get better with money. Number one, have a goal. We all need a North Star that we're chasing after so that we have reasons to make sacrifices. Like Simon Simic likes to say, start with your why. Number two, track your expenses and make a budget. I know some of us have tried to do this in the past. We've downloaded the apps and it didn't work. And the question we have to ask ourselves is, did we actually want it to work? In other words, were we participants in making it work? In other words, we have to stay on top of it. We actually have to follow the budgets that we create for ourselves. Just remember one thing when it comes to a budget. It's not a no statement. It's just you saying yes to the things that you actually value and no to the things that is just kind of like whatever to you. Number three, track your net worth. Because when you see that number on a piece of paper that tells you exactly how much you're worth, that starts to change something in you. Remember, your net worth is actually your wealth. Wealth is not the amount of salary that you bring in every single month. Wealth is the actual money that you get to keep, is the money you invest and save. That's what's actual wealth. Number four, have an emergency fund and pay off all high interest debt and then stay away from them things. This is the foundation of your entire financial lives. If you have an emergency fund, a lot of the things, a lot of the stresses that life tends to throw at us end up not being stresses, but end up just being minor inconveniences. And then finally, number five, invest, 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 specifically in boring old retirement accounts like the IRA, the 401k, HSA. This way you're actually doing something that's taking care of future you down the road. And then, like I said, generosity is always greater than greed. God bless each and every single one of y'all. And your boy's out of here.